This is your homework helper, Mrs. Anderson. Today I will help you with lesson 11, add mixed numbers. Please have your homework page ready and let's begin. Okay, during, on this homework helper section, we have an example of four and three eighths plus seven and one fourths. Now we know that when we add unlike fractions, we need to have a common denominator. So I'm gonna write four and three eighths plus seven and one fourth right here. I need a common denominator, so I'm going to extend my fraction bar and think, what is a common multiple of 4 and 8? Well, if I count by 4s, I get 4, 8, 12, and if I count by 8s, I get 8, 16. Oh, I noticed I said 8 in both of those lists. So 8 is going to be my greatest, my lowest common multiple, my lowest common denominator. So now I'm going to ask myself, what do I do with 8 to get to 8? I times by 1. 3 times 1, so I'll times by 1 on the top as well. 4 times what number equals 8? It'll be 2. So since I multiplied by 2 in the denominator, I'm going to do the same thing in the numerator. 1 times 2 is 2. Now I'll do 3 plus 2. 3 plus 2 is 5, and my denominator stays the same, 8. Okay, I've added my fractions. Now I'm going to come over here and add my whole numbers. I have 4 plus 7. 4 plus 7 is 11, so my answer is 11 and 5 eighths. All right, down here it says to estimate. We're not going to estimate. The skill we're working on is adding. So I can see on this one right here, 2 and 1 tenths plus 5 and 7 tenths, I already have a common denominator. So I can just add across the top here. 1 plus 7 is 8, so I'll have 8 tenths. And 2 plus 5 is 7, so I have 7 and 8 tenths. Is this simplified? Well, I can tell it's not simplified because both of these numbers are even. So I am going to divide by 2 to simplify. All right, let's do one more together here on this page. Let's do this one, 3 and 5 eighths plus 6 and 1 half. I'm going to write it in a column, plus 6 and 1 half. All right, the first thing that I need is a common denominator. I have 8 and 2. Well, I know that my common denominator is going to be 8. So I'll ask myself, what do I do with 8? To get to 8, I multiply by 1, so I'll multiply by 1 on the top as well. What do I do with 2? To get to 8, I'll need to multiply by 4, so I'll multiply by 4 on the top as well. 1 times 4 is 4. Now I'm going to add 5 eighths plus 4 eighths. Oh, that equals 9 eighths. So here I have 9 eighths. Oh, students. When the numerator is larger than the denominator, okay, that's an improper fraction, but that means I have more than a whole in here. So I'm gonna take that 9 eighths. I'm actually gonna slide it over here a little bit. I have that 9 eighths, and I'm gonna take out a whole. I'm gonna take out one, basically, one whole. When I have a denominator of 8, then a whole would be 8 eighths. That equals 1. So now I'll do 9 minus 8 is 1. And 8 minus 8 is, oh, I'm sorry, this is the denominator. The denominator stays the same. Okay, I took out this whole, and what I'm going to do is carry it right over here to the top of the whole numbers. Because 8 eighths is a whole number, and it it's one whole, so I'll put the one whole right here. Now I've used it, I don't need that anymore, so what I have left on my fraction is one eighth. So I'll write right this here, I have one eighth. Now I'm going to add my whole numbers. I have one plus three plus six, one plus three is four, and four plus six is 10. So my answer is 10 and one eighth. So when I have more than a whole, I take the whole out, and carry it to the whole numbers and then add. All right, that's what you'll continue to do on this page. Let's look at the back page. A flower is nine and three fourths inches tall. In one week, it grew one and one eighth inches. How tall is the flower at the end of the week? 
Okay, I can tell that this is adding. I'm going to do 9 and 3 fourths. I'm going to add 1 and 1 eighth. I can see that my denominators are not the same, so I am going to need to get the lowest common denominator. So I'll think of the numbers 4 and 8. Think of multiples of 4 and 8. 4, 8, 12. Oh, I said 8, and 8 is here. So I do know that 8 is going to be a common denominator. So then I'll do 4 times what number equals 8? It's 2. And so I'll do 3 times 2 and put 6 on the top. Down here, 8 times 1 equals 8. So I'll do 1 times 1 equals 1. Now I'm going to add. I have 6 plus 1. 6 plus 1 is 7. And here I have, oh, and my denominator stays the same. Then I add my whole number. My whole number is 9 plus 1 is 10. So my answer is 10 and 7 eighths. I'll write it here, 10 and 7 eighths. All right, when you get to number 8, it says five ten, find 10 and 3 sevenths plus 18 and 2 sevenths. Write in words in simplest form. You can write it in words if you want to, but you don't need to if you don't want to. All right, 10 and 3 sevenths plus 2 plus 18 and 2 sevenths. Okay, and you'll add that up. Let's look at number 9. Cotter is filling a 15-gallon wading pool. On his first trip, he carried 3 and 1 twelfth gallons of water. He carried 3 and 5 six gallons on his second trip and 3 and 1 half gallons on his third trip. Suppose he carries 5 gallons on his next trip. Will the pool be filled? Explain. He has a 15-gallon wading pool. So I need to see if I add these numbers up, if it's going to get to 15 gallons. So let's do 3 plus 1 twelfth, 3 plus 5 sixth, 3 plus 1 half, and those are the ones that I'm going to add, okay, to see and then I'll actually add 5 at the end, this part here, to know if the pool will be filled. So I need to get a common denominator with all of these three numbers, 12, 6, and 2. Extend my fraction bar and figure out that part. And then add, add this up as well. Okay. So let's look at number 10. Benjamin had 2 and 1 third gallons of fruit punch left after a party. He had one and three-fourths gallons of lemonade left. How many total gallons did he have left? I'll need to add this number and this number together and to determine how many gallons he had left. So I'll write two and one-third and one and three-fourths in a column. And I can see that I do not have a common denominator, so I'll need to get a common denominator so I need to think of multiples of 3 and multiples of 4 to get my common denominator, and then I can continue on. Thanks for watching this homework helper video. If you have questions, feel free to ask me tomorrow at school.